Hello and welcome to the Kerygma. We want to welcome each and every one of you who have joined us uh, this morning. Could be afternoon or evening or night where you are, but here it's morning time. So we want to say thank you for joining us today. And we trust that the Lord will speak to you as we look through his word. We want to encourage, we want to bring a word of encouragement. I know some of you may have been going through uh, some difficulties uh, in the past week or past month or for a very long time. You didn't know where to turn to. Sometimes even Christians forget that they have God, God on their side, that they have got God on their side. And whenever they are burdened, that they can take their burdens, trials and tribulations and worries and anxieties to God. Many times we forget to do that. But God's promises are still valid today. So I want to talk about God's promises for your personal needs. God knows that you are um, um, a human being and you have limitations and that there are so many things that you cannot achieve or do in your own strength. Remember, God says it's not by power but by my spirit, if we are going to do anything, we got to trust in God fully without wavering. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we stand upright in God. So I want to encourage you from that aspect where we look at God's promises for your personal needs. The question then becomes, do you have doubts and fears on these promises? I just want to read um, one scripture. Remember, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, we read the following. Matthew 6, verse 33. The Bible says, But seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in thine own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and God will meet your desires. There must be holy desires. There must be right and correct desires. There must be God-glorifying desires that we have. It's not every desire that God is going to meet. Sometimes we get uh, mixed up and say, God will do anything for me. I can do whatever I want to do, regardless of what God has said, and God will meet my desires and needs. No, there are many conditions in the Word of God that we who hear and follow His Word must satisfy in order for those promises to be fully appropriated. So this is what I'm going to talk about today and I want us to pray quickly before we go further. Father, I want to thank you in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for today. I know that for all the listeners to this broadcast on the charisma today, that they will open their hearts and allow God to speak to them um, in the time of their need and situation, whatever it is. I pray that your word will bring encouragement to us as we look through it. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But the Bible, in that verse alone, it doesn't explain what these things are. But before we can understand what these things are, we must understand the reason why we should trust God in the first place. We should trust God 
because God says we shouldn't we should we, we shouldn't worry about anything in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 we read the following no one can save two masters for either he will hurt the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other you cannot save God and mammon here he says you cannot save God and money. That's the context. Mammon here, mammon here, refers to God uh, to, to to money. That you cannot save God and money at the same time. You have to give up the other and save the the the, the other. You have to be loyal to one. You can't be loyal to two. And he says, therefore I say to you, verse twenty five. Therefore I say to you. Do not worry about your life. What will what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? God is asking you, are you not of more value than the birds of the air? They neither sow, they neither reap. But God looks after them. God provides for them. So he says, look at the birds of the air. Now, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? He says, if you worry, if you, you center all your life on worry, you worry about this, you worry about that, you worry about things that happened in the past, things that are happening and things you imagine or you think are going to happen. He says, what good will it do you if you live life that way? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, these uh, uh, flowers, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, verse 31, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. That's why he says in verse, three, verse 33 that seek it, don't spend time worrying about things. The only thing that you should be worrying about is seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto him. Now, what are we going to base on? Um, the the trust that we have, where can we place our belief um, in what we are hearing? For those who have just joined us, I want to acknowledge all those who are already watching, and uh, I believe the Lord will uh, speak to you as we as we do this. Now, God says you cannot save two masters. Do not you cannot save God and Mammon, which is money. He says, some of you spend all your life worrying. He says, do not worry about these things. God wants to open our understanding and our ears. He says, look at the birds of the air. They, know, they do not spin, they do not sow, and yet they reap. Okay, and yet God provides for them. He says, are you not more important than these birds? Okay. He says, if you keep on worrying, is it, what, what is it going to add to your life? Is it going to add anything positive to your life? So do not trust in any of these things. Trust in God. And 
this morning or afternoon, as I said, depending on where you um, um listening from, we are going to look at the reasons why we must trust God. Why we should trust God. Why is it important that we trust God? We are going to appeal to the scriptures. So if you have pen and pencil, I want you to be writing down the scriptures that we are going to look at because it's very important. The, 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 the Christians in Berea, when Paul had preached to them, they went back home and checked the things that Paul said, whether they were right things, which is lacking in, in our time today. Christians don't search the scriptures. They wait for the preacher to preach to them. And that's it. We need to be checking scriptures for ourselves. We need to be Bible students all of us studying the word of God, because that's how we are going to discover the kingdom, um, the kingdom of God and its righteousness, how it works and how we can be part of that kingdom that God is building, that God is busy establishing. Remember, he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we're going to look at the scriptures, why we should trust God. Why is it important that we lean not in our own, our, in our own understanding, but that we acknowledge God in all what we do. When we read Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, 13, we read the following. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Living Bible says, For I can do everything God asks me, asks me to with help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. Paul here recognizes that he can do all things, not in his own power, but through the power of Jesus Christ who strengthens him. I want you to realize that we can do all things, but this is not just um, jumping on this scripture and say, yes, I can do it. You've got to believe it. You've got to understand it. You've got to have faith in God. Why? Because God says um, uh, you must not lean in your own, in your own understanding. For I can do everything God asks me to with the help of Christ uh, who gives me the strength and power. Remember, our source of power, our source of strength is Christ himself. And because he is our source of strength, his power becomes our power. We can do all things. These are righteous things. These are things that glorify God. These are not sinful things that Paul is referring to when he says, I can do all things. But he is referring to righteous things, that he can do all what is righteous through Jesus Christ who strengthens him. This is in Philippians chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 13. Then we have 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Paul again here continues to say this. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Paul is saying, no, look, we, we, on our own, we don't have it all. On our own, we are not self-sufficient as it were. And he says, our sufficiency lies in God. If we can boast of any sufficiency, if we can boast of anything that we can do, it is must, it must be through Christ. That's why he says, not that we are sufficient. Paul is saying, it's not in our own power and strength that we are sufficient. And if we were sufficient in our own selves, then that sufficiency is going to deplete at some point because we would have exhausted all of it. And the only way we can continue to be sufficient is 
in God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You see, it's like, look, Paul looks at himself and thinks, who am I <laughs> without God? You see, I am what, I am who I am because of what God has done in my life. Remember, we are looking at God's promises for your personal needs. And we have asked the question, do you have doubts and fears? And the scriptures we are looking at are all encouraging us that we can stand firm, that we can move forward if we trust God. Remember what he says in um, Romans uh, chapter 4 verse 21, he says this, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. He is emphasizing here that God, when he promises something, God will fulfill it. God will perform it. Being fully persuaded, but we must be persuaded. We must be convinced beyond reasonable doubt that what God has said, God will perform. This is what Paul is saying here. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You must be convinced in your heart of hearts that what God has said about you, that is going to do it because he who has promised is faithful, being fully persuaded. Are you persuaded of anything concerning your faith in God? Are you fully persuaded that the scriptures that you read and the things that God says you can do or you can be, are you fully persuaded that it, that can, that can happen? The promise is this. He who had promised, he was able also to perform it. That was Romans chapter 4, 21. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. He is faithful to that promise. We're looking at the promises. We're looking, sorry, we're looking at the promises of God that he who had promised is what? He is faithful. The, no, uh, that just dropped. And uh, um, that's why we had this uh, um, a little disturbance there. But he says, he is faithful that promise. Hebrews 10, 23, God who is making these promises to us that we should not worry about anything, that we should not be troubled in our heart and in our spirit. But he's saying we should trust God and he gives us the reasons why we should trust God. Why? Because he is faithful that promise. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Then look at um, Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. This is a paraphrase. Fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right victorious hand. God is saying to you, unto me and we must be encouraged god is making a promise what is that promise his promise is first of all fear not god knows that fear paralyzes us we should not be snared with fear we should not be afraid to do anything in god we must be able to say i can do all things through christ who strengthens me? As Philippians, the first verse we read, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, but he says, fear not. Why? I am with you. God is saying, do not be afraid. And he gives us the reason. The reason is this. God is with us. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Be encouraged. 
Why should you be encouraged? Because I am with you. God is saying, I am with you. I will strengthen you. God saying, I know you are weak. I know you cannot stand on your own. So I am going to do something. First of all, you do not have to be afraid. You do not have to fear nothing because I am with you. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. God is saying, I'll hold you in my palm. And that's why you don't have to be afraid. As, because, because you are in, in my palm, it means I am with you and you are with me. So you don't have to be afraid. How many times have we been Afraid. Do you have doubts and fears? God says, do not be afraid. Fear not. Then we go in Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant, this is God speaking. My covenant will I not break. No alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. He says, look, when I prompt, God is saying, my, my covenant I will not break. Okay, that's what it says. And the things that have gone out of my my lips, I will keep that. Why? I have making this promise that I will not break anything, nor alter the things. To alter here is to change what God has said. He says, I will not change anything that is gone out of my mouth. What is that thing that is gone out of his mouth? Is that fear not. I am with you. God is not going to alter that. God is not going to change that. God is saying to you that you can do all things through Christ. He's not going to change that. No matter what happens, does it mean when we fail, does it mean God has failed? God Change the mind. No, we fail. Perhaps we haven't heeded to the full instructions that God has given us in order to appropriate the promise that He has given to us. Remember, God's promises for your personal needs are still valid today. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of mouth. What God speaks, remember. Scripture said, God is not a man that he should lie. Has he not said it? Will he not perform it? That's what he's answering here. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that has gone out of my mouth. That's Psalm 89 verse 34. Now look at Isaiah 46 and verse 11. He says, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Let's go. Let's go by one, one by one. What does this is? I have spoken. God has spoken. Remember the verse that we just read earlier, that the word, he was not going to alter anything that has come out of his lips. And he says, I have spoken. Okay. I have spoken. What is it? Is going to do because he's spoken. It says, I will also bring it to pass. Why? Because he has spoken it. God will not change it. God will not alter it. I have purposed it. It's God's will. He has purposed for that to happen or to take place in your life. I have purposed it. I will also do it. That is Isaiah 46 and verse number 11. Now look at uh, Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Listen, these are words that we should be uh, relying on. Total, Our total dependence has to be on God. Why? Because God is making these promises. He's not just trying to entertain us. He's trying to build us. He's trying to encourage us that our walk, so that our walk with God is a closer walk based on our relations and uh, relationships 
And because we have relationship with God, God has said certain things to us. And these are the ones that we are looking at. So we don't have to worry about nothing. I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. And Malachi 3.6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. That's why, because God cannot change, it means God will not also change his word. He has spoken and it shall surely come to pass because God has spoken it. Zechariah 13 and verse 9. The Bible says this, They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it's my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. <laughs> Let's recap. Let's go stay step by step. What is he going to do? What, what are we going to do? He said, they shall call upon my name. They shall call on my name, the name of the Lord, which is our strong tower. The name of the Lord in whom we have victory. The name of the Lord that brings victory in our lives and, and removes all the challenges of our lives. Remember, when we are afraid, when we have doubts, when we, we, we don't think it's going to happen, God says, they shall call on my name. I will hear them. God is assuring us that when you call me, I will answer. Because that's what he says here. And I will hear them. This is what God is going to say. He's not only going to hear us. He says, I will say, it's my people. God recognizes you, that you are his people. Of course, in order for you to become God's person, you have to be born again of the Spirit. You have to be born again of the Spirit. Remember, if a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all has become new. He says, they shall call on my name. I will hear. God is saying, when you call on my name, I will hear. And I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. <laughs> Listen, God says, when you call on his name, he will hear. And he will say, these are, or this one is mine. These are my people and my people will recognize me and say, he is our God. Is he your God? Are you really calling on him in that predicament where, where, where you are this moment or where you have been or in that situation or that mountain you have been facing all this time those worries those fears those anxieties are everything that has stood in your way have you called upon the name of the lord he says if you do he will hear they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. That is in Zechariah 13 and verse 9. And then we have another scripture here in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Here it says, ask and you will be given what you ask for. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Why? For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. <laughs> 
What an assurance. This is to say to us, we should never worry about anything. Why? Because scripture say, keep knocking. Don't just knock once, keep knocking. Don't stop knocking. Don't stop believing. In other words, keep on believing because God has promised. God is saying, if you keep knocking, the door will open. Okay? The door will only open when you keep knocking. Okay, what is it that God is challenging you and your situation that you have been worried about? Have you kept knocking? The Bible says, if you keep knocking, the door will open. For everyone who asks, you need to ask also. In order to receive, you have to ask. Okay? Who Whoever asks, receives. Anyone, anyone who seeks, finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. For instance, you, you, you want to visit a friend, you, you go to their house. You stand outside, they don't know you are outside. They, 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 they will not open the door, they will only come to answer the door once they have heard a knock. The knock is saying, I am here. I want to come in. Will you open the door? And because they hate your knock, you persisted in your knocking. The door opened. That's what it says. For everyone who asks, receives. Anyone who seeks, finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. It reminds me of a story that Jesus told of a uh, the man who received a visitor at midnight and he didn't have no food. And he goes to the neighbor's house and keeps knocking. The neighbor opens the door. What do you want? He says, well, I have a stranger who has just arrived. I don't have no food. Can you spare me some food so that I can prepare it for my visitors? He says, the man shuts the door and says, get out of here. I have no food. The man doesn't go. He continues to open. Listen, friend, I have received visitors. I need to prepare some. He kept on knocking. And that man eventually gave his neighbor the food. And the neighbor went and prepared that food for his visitors. What is it that Jesus was saying? He says, when you are asking for something, don't give up. Keep asking. Knock on the door. Because that's the only way the door will open. Let me ask you this question. Have you been knocking on the door, on God's door, so that he will open it? So that you can experience a breakthrough, a blessing? You have to keep trusting God, that God will do it. Remember the scriptures we read earlier on in uh, uh, Hebrews uh, 10 verse 23. He says, he is faithful that promise. And God has promised that if you keep knocking, you don't give up. You persist in believing and trusting God. The door will open because that's what God does. Because that's what God has promised. Fear not, I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious hand. God's promise is yea and yea. And God is saying to us, keep knocking. And I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, as you listen to this message, maybe you are at the point of giving up. Simple reason, because you have been knocking for too long, the door hasn't opened. The scripture says here, keep knocking, the door will open. If only you will knock, the door will open. Keep knocking on the door, the door will open. James chapter 5 verse 16 says, The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. The righteous, the consistent, the 
importunate prayer of a righteous man. You have to be righteous, not in your own righteousness, but in the righteousness of God. When you pray, he brings this down to prayer, that when you are praying, and if the prayer of a righteous man is effective, we have to look deep into our hearts before we ask God for anything. We have to check our hearts. Is our heart in the right place for what we are asking God? Is my heart fully trusting God? That he, because he who has promised, because he has promised and he will perform it. Our heart has to be in the right place. The effective prayer of a righteous man is not just praying. We have to be righteous in our hearts. We have to examine our hearts, even for the things that we are asking and believing God for. Are these righteous things? Will these things bring glory to God? Or I'm just asking for something that will satisfy me, I, and myself alone. Remember, it's the effective prayer of a righteous person which accomplishes much. James 5 verse 16 Look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 24. Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. Who has called you? Remember, the church means those who are called out. Church is not a building. It's people who are called out. Okay? We are Every Christian, everyone who trusts in God is a called out person. And scripture says, faithful is he who calls you and also will bring it to pass. God has called you. If you know in your heart, God has called you and you are moving on the path of righteousness. Do not imagine righteousness. We're talking about the righteousness of God. It don't do me no good thing. If I know I'm not walking in righteousness, I may even portray righteousness outside, but God knows the inside of me. He knows and I know whether I'm walking in righteousness. Remember this. Faithful is he who calls you and he also will bring it to pass. Psalm 119 and verse 160. The Bible says, The son of thy word is truth, and every one of thy righteous ordinances is everlasting. The psalm of thy word is truth. God's word is truth. Oh my goodness. When it comes to truth, the world has lost truth. The world doesn't know truth. The world is twisting truth and trying to make it a lie and uh, a lie to become truth. But truth does not change. God's word is true. Jesus is true. Pilate asks Jesus, what is truth? He was looking at the truth. When he looked at Jesus, he was looking at the truth. He's the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. If the world is going to know the truth, the world has to come back and study what God has said, even on issues that we are struggling to understand. Our rebellion has just got out of hand, okay? We're trying to twist every truth to become a lie. Remember, this is what Paul talks about in Romans chapter 1. That they turned the truth into a lie. 
When do you turn the truth into a lie? When you begin to go contrary to what the scripture has said. Remember, the Bible is God's word. The Bible was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The world is trying to change that. It says there are so many wrong things in the Bible and they are trying to reconstruct the truth. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, you cannot change the truth. It's either it's the truth or it's a lie. Only one of the two. Either it's truth or it's a lie. And you cannot change a lie into a truth. Because truth is constant. Truth stays the same. God's word is true. Jesus is true. What he has said, it shall come to pass. The sum of thy word is truth. And every one of, the right, of thy righteous ordinances is everlasting. It says, what if the ordinances of God are everlasting, it means whatever man is trying to change that God has already said it will never work. Why? Because God's righteous ordinances are Everlasting. That is Psalm 119 and verse number 160. Look at Psalm 112 and verse number 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. That's why you can never be afraid. Why? Because even when you hear bad news, this is what uh, Psalm 112 is saying. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. When evil news, when discouraging news comes to him, he shall not. He shall not be afraid. Why? Because his heart is fixed. Fixed on what? Trusting God. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Listen. If you trust in the Lord, that's why he's saying to you and to me, lean not in thine own understanding, but in all your ways you acknowledge him. That is what God wants us to know. Our heart has to be fixed on that, that we have to trust God. We have to trust in what he has said. And this is what he has said to us. Do you have doubts and fears? Oh no, it shouldn't be so. Because God says this. If you trust in me, if your heart is fixed on me, even when you hear bad news, you will not be afraid. Why? Because you are trusting in me. That's Psalm 112 and verse number 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Sometimes we hear, some of us are going to hear bad news today or tomorrow or the next day or next week or next month or next year. What should be our response? Do not be afraid of evil tidings. Do not be afraid of evil news or that sudden news. I know you're saying, Pastor, you don't understand. There are some things that you cannot just uh, uh, avoid. They, they will affect you. Oh no, listen to what we are saying from the Word of God. God is saying to you, do not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? Because your heart is fixed. Fixed on what? Fixed in trusting God. Are you trusting God in everything that you do? Are you trusting God? You see, because when you trust God, even when you hear bad and sad news or discouraging news or depressing news, you will Stand firm. Why? Because you are trusting in God. 
In another scripture, the Bible says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose heart is stayed on you. It's fixed on you. You will keep him in perfect peace, even when you hear sad news. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said? Peace I give you, such as the world cannot. Peace which passes all human understanding is the peace that Christ gives to us. That's why you and I should not be afraid of evil tidings because our hearts are fixed trusting in the Lord. Your heart has to be fixed. You don't have to weather, you weather. You have to be fixed trusting in God. Are you there trusting God? I just want to give you all these scriptures because they are speaking into our lives. They are assuring us that God has not just told us to, um, to seek his kingdom first and these things shall be added unto us. And he doesn't explain. He's explaining why we should be seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness because God is saying, when they call on my name, I will hear and I will answer them. And I will say, this is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is our God. My friends, we stand on solid ground by trusting in Jesus. No other fount we know but that of Jesus. All other foundations are going to swallow you. The only foundation that stands is a firm foundation that has been built on Jesus Christ. That's where our trust has to be. Listen to what he says here in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. This is in the context of people who mock Christians. They say, you have been talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. It's almost 2,000, over 2,000 years he hasn't come. The man counts years and thinks, oh, this is a long time. But God says that the Lord is not slow to his promises, as some count slowness. But God is patient toward you, not wishing any to perish but for all to come to repentance. That's why it's taken so long. God is wishing you. God wants you to come to repentance. Tame your life. Repentance simply means turning back to God. That's a simple explanation of repentance. And this is the biblical repentance where you repent, where you turn to God completely and forget all other things that you have been doing, you now concentrate on following God. You will pray to him and he will hear you. This is Job 22 and verse number 27. And there again in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 20, we read, He carries out and fulfills all of God's promises, no matter how many of them they are, and we have told everyone how faithful he is, giving glory to his name. You see, we believe it. That's why we tell it. We believe it. That's why we are preaching this message to you. That's why we are telling it to you. Why? Because carries, God carries out and fulfills all his promises, no matter how many of them they are. We have told everyone, and we have spoken. We need to testify to the goodness of God. 
so that people can start to trust in God, not in chariots or horses. Remember, we refer to the scripture that says some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Why? Because trusting in chariots and horses can never save our lives. It's only when we trust in God. Let me give you the last one and let me finish with this one. This is 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. Here he says, How true it is and how I long that everyone should know it, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let me read it again. This is, uh, this is paraphrased. Um, 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 uh, of this uh, paraphrasing of this, how true it is, and how I long that everyone should know. Is that your desire? Is that your desire first to know that it is true, and that you are longing to tell everybody that everyone should know about it? What is it that you desire that people should know that Christ? Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Then you will call and the Lord will answer you. You will cry and the Lord will say, Here I am. Even in your cry, God will answer you. That's Isaiah 58 and Verse number nine. Yes, the Lord hears the good man when he calls to him for help and saves him out of all his troubles. Psalm 34 and verse 17. In whom we have the boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21. Let me finish. I said earlier on, because scriptures just keep coming. The question still stands. Do you have doubts and fears? That's why we are looking at God's promises for your personal needs. God is mindful of you. Listen to what it says here in Psalm 34 verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. His eyes are upon the righteous and his ears are inclined to their cries. My friends, God loves you. We don't need to worry. We don't need to fear because God, he said to us already, fear not. Why? For I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. That's why we should not fear, because the Lord is with us. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. My friend, is this? Something that is worrying you? Are you afraid of something? God says, do not fear. Why? Because he says, I am with you. Oh no, I don't feel you. I don't see you. The fact that you don't feel it, the fact that you don't see it, doesn't mean God is not with you. He is with you and is saying to you, fear not. Why? I, for I am with you. I want to finish here and bring this challenge to you. My friend, of all these God's promises, which ones are you going to cling on to and say, I am claiming this promise. I am going to apply this promise into my life. I am not, I, I, I think the, the, the good starting point is you, for you and I to say, 
I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Because he is with me. I am not alone. Yes, I may be going through this narrow path, this narrow way, this squeezing uh, experience. But hey, I'm not alone. He is with me. Thank you for listening. I believe you took down all the scriptures that we have used. We established that there is no fear and there's no need for us to have doubt because God has spoken clearly. Fear not. Why? Because I am with you. I will uphold you with my right hand. God is saying, you are safe in my hands. I am with you. I am your God. You call on my name. I will hear. And I will say this is my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Is that where you are? Where you say, the Lord is my God. Thank you for listening. We trust that God will continue to be with us. And we will continue to learn God's word. And not only learn God's word, but apply God's word in our own lives. Thank you for your time. I can see many of my wonderful brothers and sisters are watching. I look at Pam Miller is watching. Uh, Reverend Avon Kambove watching in Zambia. And Reverend Andrew Sakala, my wonderful uh, brother in Zambia, is watching. Glenn was watching. And... Um, uh, my brother Paul Weaver was watching, Charity is watching, and many others, too many to mention, have been watching the script, the, the, this broadcast. But here's the thing, it's not just watching and listening, it's listening and doing and applying the things that God has said. What is it that stands out? God is saying we should never be afraid. Why? Because he is with us. This message will be downloaded to our um, uh, YouTube channel. I'll put a link below and you can, uh, it, I think it will um, to be uh, ready for watching by Wednesday. Um, I normally do that, spend two days in between. Wednesday around 1 p.m., you can click on the link that we're going to leave down below so that you can watch uh, this message on YouTube again. And once you get to YouTube, please do not forget to subscribe, to like, and also to um, um, hit the bell so that when we upload uh, more videos in the in future, you will be able to know. Have a beautiful weekend. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Fear not. He, God, is with you. God bless you. Shalom.